This is the Newark Earthworks. The Newark Earthworks were the largest set of geometric earthworks ever built by anyone anywhere in the world. They encompassed more than four and a half square miles and by one estimate included more than seven million cubic feet of earth in their construction. This bronze map shows in relief what the site looked like before European Americans built the cities of Newark and Heath over it. It's a map that was drawn in 1848 and was published in the very first publication of the Smithsonian Institution. It's not perfect, we have other maps that show other details, but it's historically significant and it does give us a good idea of what was here. And you can see there are several major elements. The Great Circle is where we are now. This circle was 1,200 feet in diameter. That means you could put four football fields end to end inside it. It's connected by this set of parallel walls to a perfectly square enclosure. And beyond that, there is what this map shows as sort of a horseshoe shaped enclosure. Actually, we know it to have been a, an ellipse that completely surrounded those burial mounds. And the other major element is the circle connected to an octagon over here at the Octagon Earthworks. Um, but you'll notice each element is connected to another by these interlocking sets of, of parallel walls. These seem to be ceremonial roadways that connected one place to another. And when people came here, I think they followed those pathways in some kind of ritual, almost a, a choreographed ritual, as they would engage in, in different ceremonies in one enclosure versus another. To give you an indication of the scale of this place in comparison to other wonders of the ancient world, the Great Pyramid of Egypt would fit comfortably within this square enclosure. The Roman Colosseum, you could put four Roman Colosseums inside just the octagon. And Stonehenge would fit inside this small circle that only looks small because it's next to this gigantic octagon. We're still trying to understand what the purposes of these sites were. Clearly, the overwhelming purpose is, is one of ceremony. This probably was a, a ritual center. It may have drawn pilgrims from hundreds of miles away. The people that built this, people that archeologists refer to as the Hopewell culture, lived here between about 100 BC up to about AD 400, lived in little farming homesteads scattered around this area, gathering together here for their ceremonies. The Hopewell culture were among the first farmers of Eastern North America. They hunted and gathered and fished, but also farmed plants that they domesticated locally, like sunflower and goosefoot and squash. But they didn't live in large villages. They lived in very small communities. This is not a city. This is a place where hundreds of those little communities must have gathered for church services for ceremonies that united and brought them all together for a common purpose. The Hopewell designers, the architects of this, must have had a common unit of measure. They must have had the ability to work out the geometrical design, perhaps on a sand table or something, or perhaps in, in designs painted on bark, and then to transfer those designs to this much broader landscape. The Hopewell earthworks were built with a very simple technology, pointed sticks, clamshell hose that they would use to dig the earth. They'd pile it into baskets, which they would then carry on their backs, one at a time, dumping them one after another to build these, these monumental earthworks. We're standing in the gateway of the Great Circle. This is one of the most dramatic gateways in all of Hopewell architecture. This is where the walls are at their highest, the ditch, at its deepest. This is the only way in or out of this gigantic ceremonial earthwork without climbing over a wall. And you don't build walls like this with the idea that you're just gonna climb over them at will. So the people that built this walked on this ground, came through this ceremonial entranceway, and you today can walk through this entranceway walking on the ground that these people 2,000 years ago walked. We know because of the artifacts found in Hopewell Mounds that they were actually interacting with much of North America. In Hopewell Burial Mounds, we find copper that was probably obtained from up around Lake Superior. We find marine shells from the Gulf of Mexico. We find mica, 
a flat, shiny, platy mineral that the Hopewell used to make cutouts of hands and other kinds of shapes. That comes from North and South Carolina, from the Appalachian Mountains. And there's a black volcanic glass called obsidian that has a chemical fingerprint. You can tell exactly where obsidian was found. The obsidian found in Hopewell Mounds comes from Yellowstone Park. So the Hopewell culture was the center of what some people characterize as a trade network. Um, certain trade was involved, but because of the nature of these earthworks, I think these were pilgrimage centers, that these were centers of religion for that time, and people came from hundreds of miles, perhaps bringing offerings of these precious raw materials brought from their homelands or brought from wherever they'd obtained them, and left here as offerings, not as commodities in a trade network. The question invariably arises, why Ohio? Why were the Newark earthworks built here? One answer could point to the enormous productivity of Ohio, the fish and the streams, the game. This was a very, very rich environment. But there were rich environments all over North America. Um, I think historically something happened here. Someone came up with a religious message like a Moses or a, a Muhammad, and that spiritual message caught on. And like some of the great architecture of the old world, this architecture, I think, was just inspired by uh, religious motivations. But what those religious motivations were, there is no written records that survive from this ancient period in North America. So it would be like looking at some great Gothic cathedral without having any knowledge of the Bible. So why were these cathedrals built there? Why is there a cathedral in Jerusalem? Um, we wouldn't know without those written records. With those written records, we can flesh out that history and know exactly the events that transpired there that inspired that architecture. Here, we can see that something amazing happened but knowing precisely what we may never know. There are different ideas about what might have happened to the Hopewell culture. I think they were victims of their own success. Population began to rise, and the small communities that formerly had cooperated with one another to build these monumental earthworks now started competing with one another, competing over farmland or other kinds of scarce resources. Certainly when we look at the cultures after the Hopewell, the late prehistoric cultures, around 1000 AD. They're living in larger villages with walls around them, and many of the people buried in the cemeteries of those villages have arrowheads stuck between their ribs. So conflict, military conflict, seems to be a, an issue for the later cultures. And fundamentally, in my opinion, that's what caused the decline of, of the Hopewell culture. We are fortunate to have these major remnants of the Newark earthworks preserved, but at the same time, it's tragic that so much of this once magnificent complex has been lost to us. But that's a sadly common story for some of these great earthworks across Ohio. When Ephraim Squire and Edwin Davis created this map in 1848, they wrote with specific reference to Newark that the ancient lines can now be traced only at intervals among gardens and outhouses. And they predicted that within 50 years, the people of Newark would have to look at this map to even know that such a thing was here, that was once here, and that now was, was their city. That prediction proved to be overly pessimistic because the people of Newark worked to preserve the Great Circle. It was preserved initially as the county fairgrounds, they also preserved the circle and the octagon. Initially, it was preserved as the campgrounds for the Ohio National Guard. When the National Guard left, um, it became a golf course, which it's still a golf course today. But the reason the Ohio Historical Society has these as part of our site system now is because the early European Americans of Newark found creative ways to incorporate these earthworks in their own architecture, in their own landscape. The Newark Earthworks are now on the short list from the United States Department of the Interior as part of a Hopewell Ceremonial Earthworks nomination that's going to UNESCO. And we hope very soon that that nomination moves forward and that the Newark Earthworks become a World Heritage Site. 
Now, one of the most important things that will do, that will bring the world here. People from all over the world already come to see the Newark Earthworks, but this will make it more widely known. We'll have people coming here from all over, and the local people, the people of Ohio, will see the site perhaps anew through the eyes of the world that's coming here in awe of these earthworks. And I think then we'll appreciate even more what we have right in our own backyards.